Okay, it's time to configure or reconfigure, I would say, Outlook profile for users' computers so that they can connect to their Office 365 mailbox rather than connecting to on-premise exchange. If you have got if you have already get rid of Exchange Server, like if you have deleted their mailboxes, decommission your Exchange Server, then you don't have to worry about it. But uh, if it's not the case, your Exchange still exists there. And even though Exchange is gone, you know, ADS schema is still there. Few things lingering on in AD, of course, Exchange related. As you know, Exchange modifies the schema. So there are few things that you may need to do in your, in your own premise environment to make sure that when user reconfigure their Outlook profile or support, IT support or service desk, configure their Outlook profile, they don't connect to on-premise exchange again, which has an old data. You want them to connect now to their Office 365 mailbox because that's going to be their active mailbox from now on. So there are a few changes we need to make in this regard to make sure that this happens correctly. And that's what we will discuss in this video. So let's do it. So these are the few things that we need to do. First thing first, we need to create an auto discover alias or CNAME record with, for auto discover and make sure it points to to the Office 365 auto discover. For example, if I go to my external DNS zone, there is a CM record called auto discover, right? That's pointing to auto discover.outlook.com. Same thing I need to do on my internal DNS as well, because the client first will connect to internal DNS zone. And we need to make sure that there is something called auto discover CNAME record that's pointing to auto discover.outlook.com. Second thing on my Exchange server, especially the client access server, and of course in Exchange 2016, it's all in one like single role. So we have to set the client access server auto discover internal connection URI to null. In some cases, you may see that although you perform these two steps, but you may see that Outlook is still pointing to it. Then there is some re registry hack as well as there is an option that we need to manually delete the service connection point uh, using etc edit. I may show you, but usually these two things more than enough. The first two points are more than enough to point the client. You just wait for things to settle down and to replicate. And, of course, decommissioning on-premise Exchange Server because it's not an active Exchange Server anymore. Maybe you want to use it for record keeping or keeping those mailboxes, extracting data for PST or some other thing, but it's not active anymore because, don't forget, we performed cut over migration. It's not a hybrid deployment where you have on-premise Exchange as well as Office 365. So cutover means now you switched over from on-premise to cloud. So I don't see any reason of running Exchange, but in case if you are running it, then it's fine. Otherwise, you may like to delete mailboxes from the mailbox database and delete the mailbox database and finally decommission the Exchange. Okay. Okay, to perform the first step, which is creating a C name auto discover record. I'm on internal DNS. I'm going to forward look up zone96.net and here I create a C name and I would say here auto discover and point it to auto discover dot outlook dot com. Okay, because that's what is the requirement and that's what my external is right auto discover .com. so okay that's the first thing second thing was setting up the command so let's do it
Okay. To set the auto discover internal URI, I'm in the exchange management shell, as you can see here. And to get it from all the way from here. So I will first verify what is the auto discover internal URI set to. And auto discover service internal URI set to mail.itsense.net auto discover auto.xml. And if we want to change it and we want to change it to null, right? So let's do it. So how do we achieve that? This time instead of a get client access server, we will go for set client access server, identity mail, which is the server, and auto discover service internal URI null. And let's see. Once there, we would like to verify. And this time when we say get client auto scour internal URI, and it's null. As you can see, it's null. Perfect. So we set the exchange. We changed the DNS. We set the exchange. And now we will wait for application to occur. And then we will try to configure user profile. Also, just for extra touch, I mean, what I would like to do, I will go to services, okay, and I would like to dismount the local exchange information store. You don't have to do it, okay, uh, but I just want to just that show that that's what will happen. Okay, that we will connect to Office 365. Of course, we will do, but and you don't have to. But uh, let's say if I do that, what will happen? Okay. So I'll see you in client computer. Okay. Now I logged in as administrator as IT Sense stop there, and I would like to reconfigure my output profile for Office 365. So I'll go to Control Panel, uh, Mail. This is my old profile. I would like to add a new profile, let's say called Office 365. And it detect my uh, email. Okay. I won't go for manual setup. Let's see the automated setup and see how long it takes to recognize or automatically detect my settings. So if I say next, now it's searching for administrator at idsense.net settings. Just one thing I need to make sure though. If I go here and I say ping auto discover dot it sense dot net right yeah it's resolving to office 365 auto discover because i added record auto discover dot outlook dot com and outlook auto discover dot outlook dot com has redirected to auto discover au because i'm in australia so that's all good. So resolution is working fine. Let's see how long it takes to for it to appear. So what I will do now, I will pause this video and I will come back when something changes on this screen. Okay. Okay. So it's changed and finally it took really like. Uh, I would say around eight to ten minutes, but finally is able to detect and connect to it. So let's say finish, and this time we will say Office 365 apply OK, and let's launch 
outlook. It's setting up a local copy. And here it is, as you can see. Welcome to Office 365. This is the test method that I sent earlier. Uh, from my email address or to like your environment box and just to double check or to, to show you if I move or switch to my on-premise exchange yep. information store service it's still stopped and disabled so it is Office 365. Yes, it did prompt me for password, and I provide the password. Which password? The password that I reset in in Office 365 user portal, not the Active Directory password. They could be same, but could be different. There is no relation. Like if I change my AD password, it won't change the Office 365 password. If I want to keep them same, I can keep them both same manually. Okay. If I want to establish a relationship, like I want always want to use my AD password, and whenever my AD password expires, and I set a new AD password, and I want that same password to use in Office 365, then we have to set up something called Azure AD Connect that will synchronize the password changes. That will allow same sign on. For single sign-on, of course, that's a federation services. That's another thing. For small to medium-sized companies, or a company who's going for cutover migration, maybe same sign-on using Azure AD Connect password sync is the better option. Azure AD Sync, of course, not only will synchronize the password, but can sync your new users as well. But anyway, that's for another video. As you can see right now, I am connected. Let me send one more email to be real quick and I will send test two and test. So I just send another email from and here it is from one of my account and here it goes. Administrator items.net. So if we go to account setting, and you see, if you go to account setting, access this account on the web, and this is the web URL for it. So if we go to account settings, right, and I want to change it though, but just to show you, nothing much. To see here, because that's detecting those things automatically. Okay, but here it does, it, it, it does verify that it is an account in Office 365. It's not my on-premise exchange. So that's all. As I mentioned, two steps are enough. First one is in your internal DNS, you need to create a CNAME or alias record for auto discover. Second thing, auto discover service client internal URI sets to null. I did those two steps, more, more than enough. Then, of course, the Outlook profile on client computer needs to be created. If they have lots of messages, don't forget setting offline copy or OST will take a lot of time so it's better to do it after hours or during the week so those bandwidth consumptions won't affect the business so this is it we have tested uh, that we can create a new outlook profile we can connect to office 365 mailbox and we are receiving emails great